Hello, and welcome to the short video from the technical team at River Meadows Software. In this demo, we will reproduce a sample mass migration of 50 source machines containing a mixture of Windows and Linux. This type of migration would fit into the velocity stages of a migration project. The idea is to accelerate migration projects by pushing large volumes of migrations in early project sprints or stages. Once full migrations are completed, the remainder of the sprint is managed by iterating differential migrations to keep source and target synchronized, ultimately leading to scheduled cutovers. Now let's go ahead and proceed with the demo. I've logged into the River Meadow SaaS platform at migrate.rivermeadow.com. Let's go to launch a cloud appliance. Here you can see I've already created a cloud appliance in AWS and the appliance is online and ready for migrations. Now we are ready to add our sources. Because we are doing a mass migration, we'll be using the upload multiple sources feature. We'll select a CSV file that contains the source IP addresses of all 50 machines we intend to migrate. We'll go ahead and upload this file. Now, let's do a quick inspection to make sure all 50 of our source machines have been added. Here, we'll change the view so that we can see and select all 50. We'll select all 50 to be in scope for inspect and configure migration. We'll choose our target cloud of choice based on where the cloud appliance is deployed. In this demo, we just have the one deployed AWS. We'll select the appropriate set of credentials to be applied to each machine for migration. These are credentials that we uploaded in a previous step. We've gone ahead and sped this process up to shorten the overall video length. Once completed, we'll click on the Check Migration Readiness option to continue with our pre-flight validation. During this process, the cloud appliance, which is deployed in our target cloud, will interrogate each source machine to ensure it meets all of the necessary requirements for migration to the target cloud. River Metal will display any warnings or errors that may require remediation before proceeding with the migration expected. So we'll continue to the next step by clicking on the Create Migration Profile option. Here, we will create our migration profile. As we've grouped together 50 machines for migration, we can also refer to this as a migration group. The groupings can be based on a multitude of factors such as plans or sprints, by geographic region, by environments such as dev versus prod, or by application stack. We'll only be changing a few options on the screen, including the plan name, global instance size, a global security group, and a global AWS tag. Then, on a per machine basis, we'll be changing the target disk to GP2 or general purpose SSD, as well as update the target network to select our desired subnet. For additional details and descriptions of migration profile options, check out our first two demos in this demo series. Once all the desired details and options are set, we'll click continue to initiate one final pre-flight validation before commencing with migrations. This final pre-flight ensures that information we provided in the migration profile is complete and won't cause any issues with our migration. At this stage, all 50 machines have begun the migration process. We'll take a quick look at the details of one of the migrations. We're interested in the migration telemetry seen in step five known as collect data. Here we can see how much data needs to be copied, how fast the migration is running, and how much time is remaining. This information is valuable for project planning. From our demo, we're seeing a transfer speed of 150 megabits per second, and we're able to transfer around 2 gigabytes of data in 2 minutes. This information can be used to model larger migrations. Let's close this window and take a look to see how our migrations are performing on mass. In our case, the Linux machines are progressing ahead of the Windows machines, as the Linux machine footprint is much smaller in this demo. Both are using block-based migration to ensure an exact replica of source to target. Let's scroll down and take a look at the progress of our Windows migrations. Here, we've sped up the migration process again to shorten the overall video length. At this stage, all 50 migrations are complete, meaning we have a running target clone in AWS. Let's take a look at a Linux workload and a Windows workload in the AWS console. Here, we're just looking at a screenshot to verify the instances have booted into their respective operating systems. In normal projects, this is where UAT would be satisfied. The block level copy means an exact replica of source to target, but the application owner may still want to test application dependencies before scheduling any production cutovers. In case you were wondering, there is no need to watch migrations complete within the River Meadow console. River Meadow will send an email showing completed migration status to the resource who started the migration. The rest of the migration activities to complete this demonstrated sprint consists of scheduling or running differential migrations to synchronize any changed data on source to our target clone. Just as with the first full migration, it's important to establish a baseline of data change rates and differential migration throughput to help shape maintenance windows for cutover. 
Here, we're going to schedule this differential migration to run later. We'll leave today's date, but we'll change the time to run at 11 p.m. that could mimic an after hours type of request. Click Confirm and Schedule. Because this is a demo, let's go into Schedule Migrations and run it now. Get a closer look at this differential migration while it's running. Similar to a full migration, we can see all the steps that are needed to complete the sync. In our case, we haven't had any data change from the time that we ran the first full migration. In your project, the differentials may take minutes to hours to complete depending on how much data changed and the available throughput. From here, we would continue to schedule or run differential migrations as required leading up to a planned cutover window. In most scenarios, we would quiesce the applications on the source machines and perform a final differential migration within the cutover window. We would also promote the target as the system of record by removing any isolation, making DNS changes, and any necessary application configuration change. This concludes our third video. Thank you very much for watching and keep an eye out for more videos in this series.